All right, party people, party people. Let me know if everything's okay with my setup here. As you can tell, I'm outside. <laughs> I'm over here on my front porch. It actually feels pretty good here today in Georgia. Give me a thumbs up or something over on the chat. I can actually see the chat today. Um, so uh, that's a good sign. Uh, go ahead and hit that like button. Helps the algorithm to kind of push out the jams. <laughs> Can't drum with that on there. It's probably a bad idea to have coffee. Mm. Wonderful, wonderful. Checking out my chat jams just to make sure. Just give me a thumbs up or something. Let me know that the levels are okay. Let me know that you can hear me fine. All of the stuffs. Mm, oh, I got a yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. It's a beautiful day for music. It's a wonderful day for sound. Thank you guys for coming to join me today. If you have any questions, definitely leave them over on the side. We'll be talking about uh, a little bit of some percussion news. There's a whole lot of percussion things going on right now. Of course, including uh, PASIC, the International uh, Sort of Percussive Arts Society, their, their convention and things, of course, is, uh, is virtual this year. So it's actually given a lot more people kind of the opportunity to check it out online for those people who couldn't kind of physically be there. So there's a whole lot of really cool things going on there. Mm. I'll give it a few, uh, a few more seconds here and then we'll start some drumming, man. Hope you guys got your sticks. We'll do a nice kind of easy sort of drum session here today. I've been playing a lot with little sticks. <laughs> I've recently had to pick back up the big sticks because my uh, my main high school is doing uh, an indoor line. Hopefully uh, it'll continue to happen before things, <laughs> if things have to shut back down again, we never know. Mm. Yo, what's up, what's up? Yeah, shout out to Noah, shout out to now. <laughs> what does that stand for? It looks like an acronym. Let me know what that stands for. Mm. Yeah. The sun was really shining on my face, so I have a diffuser here. That's what this big white thing is. Makes it look like I'm not going to heaven right now because I was bright. <laughs> you can tell like by the chair that's behind me over here, it is like the sun is like right here. <laughs> in my face. Wonderful, wonderful. We're going to start off with just some eighth notes here on the right hand. Let's do it. And one and two and ba ba ba. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and... Oh, nice. Just made the... Oh, just made the snare line. You're a freshman? Dude, that's awesome. Welcome back. What's up, Paul? <laughs> Hope you got your sticks. Yeah, yeah. Nice and smooth ace nose, babe. Nothing too hard yet. To the left hand. Uh, I'm only at like a forte right now. A lot of different people have a lot of different height systems. And even when people say the same kind of numbers or the same kind of heights, it means different things depending on who your instructor is. So some people will call this nine. Some people call this level three. I call it forte. Based off of the size of your high school band, this might be forte, this might be fortissimo for you, just depending on what balance is up top. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right hand, baby, yeah. Watch my videos all the time. Thank you, thank you. Turbos FN, shout out. What's up, babe? Welcome, welcome. Left hand and uh, I probably should have been drinking some water before this. <laughs> and notice anytime I go to the left hand, I'll actually spend a little bit more time over here just because it's a lot of people's uh, kind of weaker hand, yeah. 
relaxed shoulders, nice open resonant sound on the stick. Right hand. Yeah. Ah. 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 Left hand and oh. Ah, nice even breaths for me, babe. Mmm, stretching out that neck. Nice relaxed face. Right hand and uh. Left hand and oh. Right hand and ah. Uh. <laughs> Left hand and uh. Right hand and uh. We're gonna add a double to the end of this. Da da da. Two. I do something like this, as far as putting that little double, it helps me to engage that fulcrum and kind of start to incorporate it in with those wrist strokes. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. Nice and open on those doubles, making sure we don't close them down. Da da da. Da da da. We'll cut that in half. Da da da. 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 Da da da, nice and open. Da da da, 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 yeah, da da da, oh, da da da, ah, da da da, relax those shoulders, da da da, oh, da da da, da da da, absolute consistency of those notes, babe. Da da da, oh, da da da. Cut it in half again. So we're talking about my bad. <laughs> I was reading. <laughs> we'll go into doubles. Still only at a forte. I'm constantly adjusting, especially when I'm starting off drumming, just to make sure I don't have a whole lot of tension in my body. Sometimes that tension and that tightness can sneak in from the beginning. And you don't really know until your sound starts to really get kind of crazy. It's not even, it's not open. You end up not having the kind of endurance or efficiency of your stroke that you want. We're gonna go into paradiddles, accents on the downbeats. The last two doubles nice and open. Yeah. We're gonna do one measure of paradiddles and one measure of unaccented doubles. Two, three, four doubles. Uh 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 double. Uh 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 double. 
uh, 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 double. I'm trying to make sure I'm not closing down that last double before the paradiddles. Doubles. Uh, 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 doubles. And I'm comparing my unaccented note sound and my paradiddles to just that regular unaccented doubles to make sure that the continuity between both of these skill sets is there. Yeah, it's okay. A little bit closed there, yeah. Keeping that relaxed but fat open double there. It's all right. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> it feels good, babe. And it's always the continual fight, the continual pursuit of excellence, even on the simple things. Yeah. One more of these. Stay on the doubles. Sort of crescendo that to a mezzo. Nice and open, crescendo that to a forte. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I see the question. We can talk about the traditional jam. Go ahead and crescendo that to a nice fortissimo. We can open it on up. Bring it back down to a forte. We're going to do one measure of singles and one measure of doubles. Yep. Yeah. We'll just go back and forth in between those. Starting in the singles, two, and one, two, ready, and, uh, doubles, singles, doubles, singles, doubles, <laughs> singles, <laughs> doubles, ah, uh. if you have problems going to the singles, just remember that that right hand is only really doing eighth notes. One and two and three and four and double. One and two and three and four and double. One and two and three and four and double. Yeah, one and two and three and four and double. Uh. Very nice. Nice and open for me good continuation of the sound quality going back and forth in between these two skill sets. Mm, my right hand's a little bit too closed. It was okay. Eh. Eh. Almost. On the doubles. Day crescendo those, babe. We're gonna do the same thing going back and forth in between the singles and the doubles, but at this kind of mezzo piano height, yeah? Starting on the singles, yep. Yeah. And one, and two, 
and singles, here we go. And uh, three, four, one. Singles, two, three, four, one. Singles, two, three, four, one. Ah, the wind is blowing. That feels good. Ah. Uh. Try not to rush that first left coming out of the the doubles into the singles. Take a da, 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 take a da. There's definitely something crawling on my neck. Take a da, keep going and take a da, take a da, take a da, take a da, take a da. Nice and open. Okay. Almost. We'll stop right here. And oh, cool. Go ahead and shake them out. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Something's like gnawing on my neck. That was exciting. Anyway, so two things I'm looking for when I'm doing that very basic, simple type of warm up. Thing number one is I'm looking to just to have the the most kind of wide open, dumbo eared awake version of, of how I'm consciously listening to my right hand and my left hand in comparison to one another. And then I'm constantly going back and forth between like skill set A, whatever that is, and then skill set B and trying to make sure that I can keep the rhythms the same if they're supposed to be. If I can actually keep the sound quality of the unaccented notes the same if they're supposed to be. And, and then especially on some of the hot spots, right? the transition moments when I have to go from the last beat of the first thing into the first beat of the second thing, because that's a lot of the places that a lot of people kind of get tripped up a little bit. Most people can kind of get it by kind of beats two and three, but it's always the beginning and the end, the direction changes, if you will, um, that kind of start to break down the actual sound quality and the rhythmic integrity of what we're doing, right? Let's actually, answer or kind of address some of the questions that have been brought up here. First of all, guys, thank you for joining me. Go ahead and hit that like button if you like what's happening here. Um, and I'll try to kind of answer as many questions as I possibly can, or at least kind of address them here. So um, so Chad Smith uh, says traditional or matched. Um, I, most of the time, I know you guys don't get to see it on the actual YouTube page and things, but I most of the time actually play match grip. Um, and most of the match grip playing that I do is French grip because I play a pretty good amount of drum set and things. Um, I have certain schools that play match grip and some schools that actually play traditional grip. And it really just depends on um, what the students played when I came into the program. And it really depends on, um, you know, what kind of students are interested in what type of thing. Every single school has a different sort of profile. Um, I do like to give people the option to participate at the highest level possible. So if somebody is interested in snare drum, at least in the marching arts, the highest level possible, you have to be able to play traditional grip. If you want to go join the Hellcats, if you want to join the Marine Band or any of those things, you have to actually be able to play uh, traditional grip. So I do like to expose all of my players to that. There's still a very specific lineage of the best snare drummers in the world when it comes to traditional rudimental playing, playing traditional grip and passing that lineage down to other people. There's nothing about it being traditional that makes it sound any better or worse, but there is a very specific requirement that the top marching ensembles and traditional rudimental ensembles still play traditional grip. So for that reason, I still teach most of my high schoolers traditional grip at some point, or at least I try to give them the resources to be able to go work it, uh, work it out on their own. Hopefully that answered your question there. Uh, but for general percussion playing on 99% of almost everything I play, it's always gonna be uh, some form of match grip. Uh, 
Uh, oh, man, Tiz, you broke your left shoulder. Oh, <laughs> take it easy. Now is a, a great time to work up your double bass drum chops if you happen to be playing a <laughs> drum set. Um, I know somebody who actually broke one of their hands one time and they became a master double bass drum player because of it. So opportunity, I don't know. <laughs> So somebody's struggling with smooth triple strokes. Um, normally, it could be a, a few different reasons. Um, reason number one is you're not actually using the sticks to your ability. And I'll kind of try to talk over this while I'm doing it. What I mean by that is when you have your three strokes, there's kind of the slower version of a triple stroke where I'm still stroking three of them out. But notice all of my notes are rebounding, right? I guess I can try to take it with this actual tempo. What's important and kind of the hot spot or the point of contention is what happens on the third note of the actual triple stroke. One, two, three. One, two, three. Do you let the stick actually come up smoothly or do you add sort of a finger articulation in the back? A lot of people do that. One, two, squeeze. And they kind of squeeze and pick up the stick like that almost as if it was a form of like a molar kind of idea, uh-uh, squeeze and pick up. When you're playing straight up triple strokes and at least you're trying to play them somewhat evenly as far as the sound, even though that kind of catch release sort of idea, um, like the free stroke or the molar stroke is important and you need to be able to do that, I would highly suggest that you just play it as a regular legato stroke or rebounded stroke, right? It's just let the stick um, fly up out of your hands, right? Now, when you get this sort of medium speed triple strokes, there's going to be that weird area in the middle where you're trying to mm, stroke it out, but then also you have to start using a little bit of one of the parts of your fulcrum. This can come from a few different places. So some people, it comes from the back. Some people start to feel it kind of in that first finger that curls under, right? It can come from a few different places, but when you start to get um, into like medium slow tempos, it's not so much about the height or the visual appeal of your sticks looking the same. Close your eyes and just try to get it to sound the same because it's gonna be the speed or the velocity of the stroke on the second two when you start to get faster that's going to end up making the sound more even rather than your actual sticks returning to the same height, right? Um, that immediately frees you to concentrate on the sound and not the visual approach to how your sticks look, which in turn will hopefully make your actual triple strokes a little bit more even as opposed to trying to do um, like just straight up, like my sticks have to exactly go the same height you can kind of relax that a little bit, especially when you start to get faster, just because of the velocity of the stick. Let me know what you guys think about that um, and see how that kind of works for you. Now, of course, when you get um, uh, a little bit quicker, uh, stuff like that, um, those fingers are really going to help you kind of supercharge the second and third note my natural arm motion is going to sort of help to propel me into that secondary and, and kind of third motion that I have to get the sound quality a little bit more even. Um, don't be afraid to relax your arm and have that kind of natural arm motion here. If you only try to play it with your wrist, you're going to run into a little bit of some flow problems, especially when you get a whole lot quicker. Let me know how that works for you. I hope that helped. Yeah, so Noah says to um, make sure you're bringing out the second note. Yeah, most definitely. There's a huge sort of difference between, uh, especially when you're playing sort of slower doubles of doing kind of baby, 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 baby. Like this kind of like going into what I call bounce town too early. At a certain point, you are going to have to bounce your actual stick and you're going to fill it in the front part of your fulcrum, wherever that is, right? 
when you're these middle tempos, it's going to kind of be a mixture of your wrist, your arm, and your finger. Probably should have said that the opposite way. It's still going to be, though, the reason I said wrist first, it's still going to be primary your wrist. Because your wrist is connected to your arm, your arm is going to be relaxed. And that does actually help to connect some of those muscles together. But then to get that second stroke, not necessarily at that tempo, because I can stroke all of those out exactly. Maybe uh, at this tempo. Nah. Definitely at this tempo. I'm using I'm using my fingers here for that second note. And then I can feel it here in what I call the thumb butt, these, these muscles down here in my actual thumb. And I can feel that starting to help push that second note as that wrist is turning. Maybe a little bit quicker, and that would be a little bit more pronounced as far as that second note articulation helping out with my actual fingers. But it, that's kind of right at the cusp of the tempo that you have to start getting into that finger work to, to bring out that second note a little bit more. Thank you for that comment, Noah. Nick does quads. What's up? What's up? Welcome back, brother. <laughs> uh, somebody wrote something in a language I cannot understand. But hey, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Drumming is universal, babe. <laughs> Somebody said they're afraid they don't speak sushi. I'm I don't think that is um I don't think that's any form of Asian. <laughs> How would I get started on drum set? I actually have three drum set primers. Um three drum set primers on my page if you kind of check through them. If you can play through those types of things, um it'll really help you out. If you need to start before that, I would just basically start like just doing quarter notes, right? And then just practice doing kind of two hand independence type things, right? One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. And when you're doing that, just make sure you hold yourself absolutely accountable to um, just to playing in the middle of the beat whatever that beat is, whether it's a, cl a, a click track, whether it's some sort of um, a metronome, whatever it happens to be, just play right in the middle of the beat and then start to move that around. So keep that right hand on your quarter notes or something and then do the same thing with your right foot, like play it together, right? Beat two, beat three, four, same thing on your left foot. And then eventually, try to go ahead and go into backbeat land. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And then I'm gonna add my foot on beat one. Boom, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, foot, two, three, four, or you can do it every measure, yeah. Foot, two, three, four, foot, two, three, four, foot, two, three, four, move the foot to beat two, one, foot, Three, four, 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 one, foot, three, four. After you go through all of your quarter notes in that particular type of fashion, I'm going to go through and start to do the exact same thing with the eighth notes, right? So I'm going to move this to eighth notes, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and da da ha da 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 one and two and three and four and 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 two and three and four and two and three and four and and two and three and four and one two 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 three you get the point go through and do the same thing with your bass drum and then go into backbeat land right one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two add that bass drum on beat one one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and move it to the end and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three yeah you get the point, right? I'm gonna have it too much fun right now. <laughs> but the whole point is, is if you can kind of take yourself through that kind of very logical, gridded out 
version of that. Um, when you actually start to read other parts, you can you can eventually start to put at least your hand and your foot in some of the more common places, right? Hopefully that answered your question, Andrew. I add a squeeze, <laughs> okay. Are you probably talking about squeezing like your fulcrum, I see. A guy named Garrick said he knew me and AQ said he worked worked with him. I know a lot of Garrick's. Um, Garrick's, yeah. So tell him to hit me up. <laughs> I know I know a lot of a lot of Garrick's. Thank you, friend. Awesome, awesome. Glad that helped you. What do I make of the Zymox pad? This is a Zymox pad. I like the pad. I say I like the pad. I love the pad. It's getting pretty old now. Um, the company is terrible. Don't buy their stuff. This pad feels great um, because they pretty much knocked off the heavy hitter <laughs> design. Um, you can go look that business up. But uh, yeah, this pad feels really good. Um, that's just what it is. What do I think of hip hop? I love hip hop. Um, I make my own hip hop songs. I've been a hip hop fan my whole life. Uh, my hip hop artist name is Morning Hawk. Um, some of the backing tracks that you actually hear me do on these live streams and in um, on some of my videos are some of the tracks that either didn't make it into a real song or there's some of the tracks that are a real song. I just took out the words. The track that's playing right now is a real song that I just took out the words. Anyways, yeah, uh, that's a song I wrote a pretty good, pretty good bit ago, but um, I don't know. It just never made it onto an album or like as a single or something like that. The song is called Never Again. Um, the reason I don't normally uh, solo and stuff like that over already done tracks is because uh, you can't monetize it. Right. So and if you do, all of the all of the money actually goes to the artist. So they have a copyright claim on it. Um, it cuts it out in certain countries like Germany and things like that. And then, um, yeah, you can't, you can't monetize it. <laughs> so that's why I don't do it. Um, hopefully that answered your question, but yeah, go check out Morning Hawk. If you do like hip hop, um, there's a little bit of something for everybody. You know, there's some math rap in there. I like odd time signatures. I'm definitely from the South. I like outcasts. I like childish Gambino. I like, uh, uh, chance the rapper. Uh, if you kind of like some of those people, then you'll see some similarities in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Paul. Yeah. Let me know how that goes for you. Why can't people technically use a clock as a metronome? Um, clocks, um, if you have a digital clock that happens to make sound, that's the best bet. Um, if you have a very accurate analog clock, then technically you can use it as a metronome. The only problem is you'll always be dealing with multiples of 60. So it's either 60 beats a minute, 120 beats a minute, or if you think about the actual uh, click as like one third of what you're doing, like you're hearing it as a triplet or like a hemiola triplet, you can start to do some of that math, but for most people, just get a metronome. It's, it works out better. <laughs> Robert Adams, what's up, what's up? I was Robert's ring man forever in college. We went to Jacksonville State University. Robert is an awesome drummer and a more awesome person. Glad you stopped by, sir. Glad you stopped by. <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. I should do a snare solo over my own stuff. Uh, I've thought about it. I don't know. I mean, most of the time videos like that do well with a lot of other people um, because people like the song and then they kind of also like drums a little bit and things. Um, 
my page is more so educational, right? So there might be some lick type stuff, mainly on my Instagram page. You can go check out that page because I do play other instruments on that page, like drum set, marimba. I do actually have like actual snare drums soloing things, not necessarily over songs, but I do have some kind of free snow, uh snare solo kind of idea videos and things like that. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, there are two types of pages like on, on YouTube when it comes to drumming or music. Um, some are more inspirational, which means they show you what's possible and they inspire you to be a good drummer. That's why I love the stuff that like uh, BYOS is doing. I love the stuff that, um, you know, people who have mainly performance type pages and you look at it and you're like, that's hot, you know? Um, my page more so is on the educational side. So I'm here to give you information um, and things. There are some pages that do a little bit of both. You never know. I might actually put out a video at some point. We'll see. <laughs> There's a lot of fuse, uh, video of me showing off on set. You know, if I did do something like that, it would definitely be on my Instagram page. And when you say showing off, I mean, I guess um, showing off doesn't make the money on drum set, though. <laughs> you know, uh, people just want a straight up pocket that feels good, that's balanced, that they can do their song on top of and things. Um, so I don't know. You never know. And I would kind of maybe have to practice some of that stuff. I don't do a whole lot of soloing on drum set. Most of the stuff I play for are just uh, sessions, so people's songs, studio type work, I guess. Um, since here in Atlanta, everything is shut down as far as most wedding bands and things. Um, I haven't played like a for real drum set gig in a little bit. Uh, the two of them that I did have scheduled last month both got canceled because of COVID. Oh, Paul, he says my, my video quality is beautiful. It's kind of okay right now because the sun's going down. I do wish I had a little bit of a feel light over on this side. I might try that next time, but it does feel really good out here. So thanks thanks for stopping by. Paul Kim, Paul Kim to you, sir. I'm really digging um, those drum set videos that you put up playing through some of the songs and things. I need to go check out some more of your stuff. Too early for Christmas mug. I use this mug year round. So there'll be two of them that I'll use. It's either this one or you'll see the one that has um, the snowflakes on it. It's mainly white with the blue snowflakes. So I like them because of the size and I drank way too much coffee. Mm. It's our roll. Let's do some threes. Let's do some triplets. Yeah. Let's start this beat. <laughs> so I said, let's go. Here it is. Two and Now at this particular speed, I am stroking all of these notes out. So even though I'm letting a stick do some of the work for me, I'm definitely sending it down three times with my actual wrist. I'm not just doing this and letting the sticks kind of bounce there, right? So I'm putting a little bit more um, intentionality behind each one of those strokes, yeah? this for a little bit very specifically making sure that i'm letting that last note of the three come back up on its own i'm not pulling it up i'm not adding in any pressure in my hand on that third note out of that stroke of 
percussion is such a beautiful thing. And I do appreciate you guys being here with me today. We're going to do one measure of these just regular ones here. And then I'm going to go to one measure of the nine lengths. Yeah. We'll start just on the on the regular triplets. Hmm. Hmm. We'll wait for it to turn back around. Here it is. One, two, ready, and here. Three, four, pick it the ticket, the ticket, the ticket, the ticket, the ticket, the on. Two, three, four, pick it the ticket, the ticket, the ticket, the ticket, the ticket, the on. Two, three, four, pick it the ticket, the ticket, the ticket, the ticket, the ticket, the on. Three, four, pick it the ticket, the ticket, the ticket, the ticket, the ticket, the on. Measures of the nine lengths. Pick it the 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 p
right here, babe. Mm. <laughs> Anyways, that was a cute little little triplet, little triplet burn. That was cute. That was cute. <laughs> Stretch out those hands. Anyways, it's funny when people type feel the burn. That means you're not drumming. I see you. That means you're not drumming. You're like, yeah, I bet everybody else is feeling this burn. <laughs> I kid. I kid. <laughs> He said it felt pretty good. Cool, cool, cool. Welcome, Cam. Cameron's in the house. Hey, go ahead and hit that like button. I'm gonna have to get out of here. Make sure you guys definitely, um, if you if you have the chance, add it to your Christmas list. Tell your folk about it. Um, you can support the page by uh, purchasing a shirt. Yay! <laughs> I have those. I have that and one other kind of design. So if you want to, um, definitely check that business out please do um, tell a friend, go check me out on Instagram. I do upload other percussion things there. Um, I will start maybe putting a little bit of the stuff from the high school that I'm currently teaching. Like I said, we started indoor. Um, so I might kind of start giving a few little kind of updates and things. And, uh, and for my patrons, go check me out at patreon.com. You can check it out on most videos. I don't think I put a link underneath this one, but pretty much all of my other ones, I'm going to start to actually give them some of the parts of the show is kind of licks and things and kind of show them the process of some of the stuff that we're going through. Um, I think it'll be pr a, pr a pretty good kind of behind the scenes kind of idea to, to sort of see. Um, some of my licks will start to show up on the website called Music Chunks. So definitely go check that business out. I think there's some that'll be kind of a free type of situation. Um, there's plenty of other people that have uh, put up stuff on that particular page. Uh, Mike McIntosh, Cavaliers, Music City Mystique, people from Rhythm X, Broken City. It's a whole lot of people in all different parts of music, uh, percussion, ensemble, marching percussion, rudimental drums, drum set, everything, everything, everything. So go check them out if you have a chance. Um, I think right now I only have like maybe one or two things on there, but I'm gonna start to just kind of dump some of the stuff on there. And maybe at a certain point, I'll start to have maybe um, a few different types of licks that are a little bit different than what's on the YouTube channel here. So definitely check out those different places. You can kind of see what I'm doing. For those of you who are interested in hip hop music, like I was saying before, you can check out Morning Hawk Music. I'm everywhere. Instagram, all of the distribution places. I have two full albums out and a few different singles. So definitely check out that business. It's kind of quirky. Some of the songs are a little bit serious. Some of it gets into what you could call socially conscious rap, but then some of it is just fun. So um, that's what it is. Uh, I'm gonna check the questions one more time here and then we'll get out of here, babe. Cool, somebody just found me on Insta. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up, what's up? Come join the party. <laughs> Lincoln says, hello, hello, Lincoln. I have a good channel here. Keep it going. Yeah, hopefully I will. I'm, I'm a very busy person. I have three or four businesses that I run in my everyday life on top of my sort of teaching and whatnot. So, um, you know, as much as I have time to always try to jump in and just offer value to people, it's important for me to offer value to you first. And if you happen to like it, you can offer a little bit of value to me to help keep the page going and things. So that's always the way I think about it. I offer to you first. And if you like it, you can throw me some coins, right? <laughs> so that's how I look at it. Cool. Do I know Bill Idling? I don't I don't think so. There are a lot of people that I know that I don't necessarily know their names. So maybe if I saw them, I would I would possibly see it, but I don't think I know that person. <laughs> He said, let me get out of class. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, hey, guys, thank you for joining me here today. Um, and hopefully I'll be back next Saturday. I'll have to see. I might actually have a gig next Saturday. So it might be the Saturday after that. Either way, definitely check out my Instagram page because most of the time before I go live, I'll post on there 30 to 15 minutes before I actually go live. And I'll actually make a post here um, on YouTube about you know 15 to 30 minutes before I go live and things. I'll see you guys, deuce.